there. Hello and welcome to another episode of Design Under Influence. Today, we're going to talk about the process of switching IT providers. We're going to go through the reasons why you might want to switch IT provider. We're going to talk about the barriers and we're going to dig deeper into the switching process and talk you through uh, what is what it usually looks like from an IT company perspective, but more importantly, what sort of commitments you need to make from resources uh, perspective and time perspective on your end to make the switch successful. Wanted to first introduce my co-host, uh, Boris, who is CEO of Arc IT. And uh, Boris, how's your day going, man? Hey, my day is going great. You can see behind me, I got some sunshine. It's beautiful. Hopefully, it's just as beautiful uh, where you are listening to us. Um, and we can, you know, give you some good knowledge in the next 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. I think this is a very important subject. And I'll preface this by saying this. If you don't believe that technology is your competitive advantage at, at this stage of our you know, lives in COVID and post-COVID COVID and remote workforce and all the other things that are happening around us, then you're not pushing your business forward. It's going to be very difficult to grow, to thrive, and to make sure your team thrives as well when technology is not at the forefront of of your overall growth strategy yeah alex uh, yeah we we all have to believe that technology is a competitive advantage for our business and um one thing i want to bring up is um that we're we've just done another episode of our video series that focuses specifically on evaluating your it providers and making sure that they're helping you realize the technology advantage so please you know look for that episode and uh watch that before you watch this one because uh that one will definitely help figuring out uh, if you need to switch. Yeah, so so I guess what, what I what I would say is is the outcome, um, the all the outcomes you are looking for when you go through the switching uh, process would essentially connect and depend with your evaluation process. So that is the key thing to get right. Um, but now that let's say you have found the right IT provider, you know, we're going to talk about the, the switching process, but, but even then let's actually cover some things of why people switch IT, why people should consider switching IT providers. Let's just start with that, Boris. Can you list, list out some of the things that you see uh, for new clients coming in and what are they complaining about? Well, the overarching theme, right, is that you no longer feel that you're getting the value from your provider. And that can be broken down further into smaller pieces. One of them, for example, being, you know, your IT provider is not responding fast enough to critical issues that you may, may be surfacing or uh, questions that you have about, you know, technology, right? So they're not responding. They're not giving you the answers you're looking for. Another thing could be is just, you're seeing same issue over, over, over and over, and uh, your key provider is not doing anything. They're resolving the immediate issue, but they're not doing anything to look deeper and to actually fix the issue that's underlying so that you no longer have to deal uh, with these things going forward. Um, this is what we call being reactive uh, versus proactive in fixing the root cause as opposed to just fixing the, um, you know, the problem that surfaces. And then I think lastly is just you you feel that you're not your IT provider is not on the same side as you and your business. Right? They're not giving you the strategic advice uh, for making proper investments that you know, technology investments that would fit your business and make your business benefit. They're kind of giving you generic recommendations that are nor here nor there and are not really helping you move your business forward. So I think th those are kind of the most uh, important things. Uh, with the overarching theme just being you're not getting the value altogether. Yeah, and so let, just summarize, not responsive enough. Dealing with it, if you find yourself dealing with the same issue over and over and over again, that's that's a red flag. And also, if you don't have a strategic IT roadmap, if you don't know what's coming next, um, what next innovation um, you are evaluating and deploying, and your IT provider is not helping you guide uh, through those um, specific cri kind of business critical kind of uh, um, whether it's software, whether it's it's a hardware upgrade, whether it's a process upgrade, your IT should be intimately involved. And if they're not, then um, um, then you're not getting the value. Now, 
let me qualify one thing, Boris. Um, when we say not responsive, I wanted to give people more uh, specific advice here. What does not responsive mean in terms of IT company? Well, it means that if you have an emergency or if, if the issue is critical, um, you're able to call somebody and get somebody on the phone, you know, within 15 minutes to an hour uh, to actually to look at your issue. A lot of times what our customers tell, tell us is, you know, our server went down, we called our IT provider and we couldn't get anybody. And they just called us at the end of the day and they weren't able to you know, start working on the issue until the next day. So all this time you're down uh, and your business is not working, right? So that's something that, um, you know, responds to critical issues, but also responds to just general questions, right? So if you're asking a question, there's a process for handling that question and getting a reply back to you in a timely manner that it doesn't sit there for like two weeks and not being touched because nobody knows what to do with it. Um, so I think those are the two things in terms of being responsive to your clients that are very important. Gotcha. So I want to speak to um, some of the barriers to switching and, and why, why we have them. So as a business owner myself, as a founder and serial entrepreneur, um, you know, I've built and sold a, a business successfully. I, I run multiple businesses and I understand exactly what the company leadership thinks. Look, it's 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 going to be so difficult. It's going to be disruptive. You know, we just we might as well put up with the current, you know, current provider because they're not that bad, right? Not that bad is 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 an enemy. Um, is an enemy. And, and it depends what kind of business you are, right? If if you're truly looking out to grow and to thrive, and and remember, growth and be growing the business. F- there are various reasons to it, but one of the key things in growth, what what I like about growth, why my business is growth, um, is the wake of it, right? It's the opportunity you provide to your team. There's no stagnation, right? And I, I know I'm deviating a bit, but this is an important point. And then you are able to attract much better talent and grow much better talent. Because if you're not growing, you're flat, you basically have a bunch of lifers sitting there and 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 earning a paycheck and doing the least they can i mean it's not it's a it's, it's a generalization but typically that's where you end up with and so the smart you know people who are looking to learn and grow they want to join growing organizations so growing for the sake of growth you know depending on your reasons but it's critical for you to make sure your it provider is not in they're not that bad category okay and so what we're afraid of switching is number one is disruption right as a ceo um, as a critical, or I guess one of the executive team members, you know, you look at your workload <laughs> and then you and then you think about, oh my God, the IT provider, well, just, we'll just do it next year. We'll just do it next quarter. Um, right. So I think in, in, in ways, in many ways, disruption is actually good if it's uh, planned. And if it's, if it's something that you could put, um, if, if the outcome outweighs the disruption itself and, and the resource allocation cost. Um, and so in a lot of ways, this sort of disruption creates a positive momentum. Again, the communication out to the team is, guys, when technology is our competitive advantage, we are unable to continue uh, with our current provider. And therefore, uh, we're looking to switch to get better tools for you, to get less disruption for you. And so that that in itself, disruption itself, it could be positive, but we are as leaders of the company are, I wouldn't say afraid of it, but always Michael. wary. Yeah. It's just, I mean, think about that, Boris, right? Just, you know, let's switch all your team's computers right now. Um. <laughs> no, for sure. And uh, for sure, that that's a very important aspect. We're trying to make sure in our process, and we'll talk more about that later, is mitigate, um, you know, the perception of disruption to you and your business. Yeah. So let me go to the rest of the barriers uh, a little bit faster. I, I know I'm big on disruption, like I'm big on positive impact of disruption, as long as it is, it is planned, as long as it has, you know, as long as the vision of the outcome is greater than your resources and your, it's what you may lose during the disrupt, disruption itself. So disruption is actually the, what, what drives progress, right? But it has to be managed. Now, the who aspect, the second big barrier is the who. As a CEO, I'm, or, you know, as a key executive, I'm thinking, okay, 
darn it, darn it, it's gonna it's gonna be on my shoulders. I'm gonna have to pull this whole transition, and I already have a full boat, right? I'm already working Saturdays. Um, you know, the last thing I need is another is another project for myself, and therefore we're gonna put up with oh my IT company is good enough. The third thing is um, there might be a fear, and and I can empathize here um, that. Look, we're going to switch to another mediocre provider. <laughs> you know, going from one to another, going through all this transition and disruption as we talked, and we're going to get another bad one. And there, I'm going to refer you to initial introduction here, as well as to our other blog, our video on evaluation process. That's key. Like, yeah, if you don't do your evaluation process, if you switch from one person to another, you might as well get another mediocre company. But doing a proper Evaluation process will save you there. Um, and the last piece, last barrier, uh, again, as a leadership, as an executive in the company, for me, it's a startup costs, right? And startup costs are both in, in financial investments, like how much more am I going to pay and how am I going to sort of, you know, to a new provider or if it's the same, then what's the hourly cost? What is the cost in terms of time? And also there's a, there's a, cost to change overall right so let's 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 be honest here um change you can only manage so much changes in organization and and this is again this is something that that needs to be discussed strategically and aligned across your leadership team and then you make a move but I'll, i'll i'll run ahead for a second and just give you a quick tidbit um of information your time as an executive for switching it providers is minimal to none if you do it right, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So Boris, walk us through, well, first, unless you have other, you know, um, barriers that you want to pop up. Um, if not, then walk us through the switching process, high level from an IT company perspective. What does a switching process look like? Well, I think you got all the barriers covered. And all I'm going to say is we're going to talk about the process and hopefully we can, as part of this conversation, we can highlight that these perceived barriers may may not even be existing, right? So on a high level, I'm just gonna run through the process real quickly and then we can jump in and um, um, dive deeper, uh, either individually or into some of these topics as well. But um, in general, the process looks like this from the IT company's perspective, right? So once we are, um, you know, once we sign a new agreement, a new partnership agreement uh, with one of our clients. Uh, we then go back and uh, create an internal project for the onboarding process, and we assign resources to it. And what that means to you is you have a team of people who are working on your onboarding, whether it's uh, technical, project management, or additional resources that are required to make sure that we bring you aboard uh, correctly and as fast as possible. Then the next step is we basically start gathering information. So we're working with you to, you know, get contact information for um, all of your team members, all of your people. Uh, We're working with you to gather a list of all the technology vendors uh, that we're going to be managing going forward, like your internet provider, uh, your printer company, um, and so on, right? Where you buy your licenses from, um, so things like that. And also we're reviewing your environment we're conducting a full technology assessment uh, where we're reviewing everything that's going on in your environment from a technology standpoint, and then putting together findings and recommendations document and the IT roadmap for you so that we can then execute um, on that IT roadmap as part of our relationship. So that's all going on in the first kind of 30 days of our relationship together. At the same time, we're helping you communicate with your uh, team members um, to make sure they understand why you're switching, who you're switching to, and what the new processes look like for raising IT issues, um, sending in tickets, things of this nature. And we're rolling out our to make sure that we can support your community. Now we start providing support on day one. So once we, you know, once there is a relationship uh, that's established and a contract is signed, um, your people can contact us and we can provide support to them as best as we can. Uh, as we roll out our tools for managing and monitoring your computers and your network devices and whatever else you may have from a technology perspective, um, we can then provide much better support um, going forward, right? So the first 30 days are kind of uh, just best effort support. 
Uh, once the tool rolled out, then we can support you much better. And then we also roll out additional services to make sure that your business is protected and secure, um, you know, like advanced security tools, backup, and things of that nature, so that, um, you know, we fulfill the promise of our service. So all of this is happening usually within 30 days. I mean, we tend to estimate that the onboarding process takes about 45 days. Obviously, there's some travelers there that we need to go back and catch up on. Usually after 45 days, you're fully on board and we can, you know, we can basically call it a go live for full support. Mm. So here, my dears, is how the sausage is made uh, when it comes to uh, switching IT providers. And Boris uh, so eloquently outlined the steps. Now, what does it mean for you? Let me let me elevate and actually turn it around and inspect it from your perspective. Okay, so one, your going back to it, your evaluation process is key here. Your IT provider, if they're good, the switching process will be smooth, and it will follow the next things. I'm uh, the next things I'm going to say. If if your IT provider is another mediocre company or a company just does not specialize in your industry, that's another important piece. You know, do your IT providers have clients in the same industry? Do they focus on it? Again, back to evaluation block, but enough of that about that. So Boris said 45 days to from, you know, from zero to 45 days to fully switch IT providers. That's the timeline you expect. My main question uh, across this process was what is my time as a, as an executive of the company, as a founder, as a CEO, as a VP, as an executive of the company, what is my time commitment going to look like? Is this going to be another big uh, slab of work on my already like, you know, uh, a full plate? And the answer is no, no, your main contact. Well, our main contact during the IT process is typically the office manager or admin, and their job is to collect and provide us information. And typically, when you want to budget for their time, it takes four to 10 hours. So contrary to popular belief, most of the heavy lifting during switching of the IT providers is actually done by the IT provider. Uh, but by your new IT provider, because that's a very resource intensive process for us, but we make it as easy as possible for, for our clients. And that's similar to all other good IT companies. Typically, you know, you, you dedicate some time for your office manager, but really not a lot of time from you as an executive, as executive which is for me was the biggest key in the, in the whole process. Um, the other aspect of it is working with your current IT provider. And Boris, you might want to actually, uh, step in here. You have a lot deeper exp expertise there. It's still important to keep, keep a good relationship with the current IT provider. So the new and the current IT providers can work together and save you time, right? Correct. Yeah. The better relationship you have leaving your current provider, the easier it is going to be to transition. So my advice to all business owners, and this is not just talking about IT providers, but in general, right? Uh, treat everybody the same way you'd like to be treated. Right? And yes, I know relationships are two-way streets, but try to do your part to maintain a good relationship throughout the process, even though you're terminating your services with them. Uh, make sure that at least from your standpoint, uh, you're not burning bridges. Because that way, it's much easier to have a collaborative conversation between both of your providers so that we can, as an incoming provider, can gather the information that we need, like passwords, existing network documentation. There's also the information that you own, by the way, and legally your provider is required to, to give it to you, but we don't want to get to the level where we have to bring up legalities, right? It, it should just flow easily uh, where you ask them and they provide it for you in a timely manner as well. I wanted to just so, sort of summarize this. The, the technology is your competitive advantage and your IT provider relationship is absolutely critical. I just want to say, don't settle for mediocrity here. You're costing your business opportunity. You're costing your team opportunity. You're costing yourself money and and valuable um, valuable time. So yes, if you're unsure about your current IT provider, uh, please give us a call so we can do a free IT consultation for you. Um, we've done many of these for our existing uh, existing and incoming clients. Be happy to work with you as well. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helped you out. And if it did, 
you know, give us a thumbs up, throw us a quick email. We're, we're uh, get um, and we're here to help you uh, run your business better, smoother, faster, and um, make you a little bit happier. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Technology is your competitive advantage.